Google runs average of more than 2 billion containers per week. That is billion with B. If you're not aware of this fact, I know how surprising it will be. After hearing this for the first time, immediately there will be a couple of questions moving around in your mind. If I guess them correctly, you will be wondering how are these containers are created and managed at such a large scale? How do all these containers connect and communicate together? How do you scale these containers as per the traffic demand goes up and down? And so on. Hello and welcome to Container Orchestration Engine. In next few minutes, I'll try my best to get you up to speed on Container Orchestration Engine. But before you watch this video, it is required to have a basic understanding on containers and Docker. So, without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you will be learning as part of this video. There are four primary things you will be learning as part of this video. First, we'll discuss about a scenario where we don't require container orchestration engine in first place. But in majority of scenarios, it is a must to have a container orchestration engine. And we'll see that what are those scenarios are. Then we'll discuss about what is container orchestration engine. And finally, we'll discuss about the features of container orchestration. And with that, let's get started with our first thing in this topic, which is in what scenarios we don't require container orchestration engine in first place. Let's imagine that you're working for a small startup where it has very few applications running. Let's say about three applications. In this scenario, you can manage and scale those applications manually as per the traffic demand with the help of some basic tools. So I guess I don't see any role of container orchestration engine in that situation. But majority of companies are from mid-sized to large-scale enterprises, where they have hundreds of apps, which is made up of thousands of microservices. So deploying and managing all these applications without some kind of an orchestration tool is almost impossible and chaos. So let's get more details around this topic in the next slide. So here's a problem that we are talking about in the previous slide. On one side, we have hundreds of apps, which consists of a large number of microservices. And on the other side, we have a big IT infrastructure, which consists of physical servers, in-house VMs, and cloud VM instances. Since we are talking about deploying and managing microservices, we need to talk about containers. Because majority of the time, these microservices will be running inside the containers. And in most cases, these are Docker containers. And there are two problems associated if you're using Docker engine by itself without the help of container orchestration engine. They are clustering and scalability. First, let's talk about the clustering. If you're using Docker engine by itself without Docker swarm mode, then you are limited to managing these apps on single host. Since there is no clustering of servers, in case if the server fails, then app comes down. And that is one major problem. Now, moving on to the scalability. Let's imagine that your company has just released a product online. Fortunately, there is a great demand for the product more than initial expectations. But the unfortunate thing here is, backend web application which is overwhelmed with the traffic from outside world and it is on the verge of break and now it's time to scale up and it will take time and you're not sure will the application will be live till then so scaling up and down with just a docker engine is not easy and we need a tool for that and that tool is called as container orchestration engine so what is a container orchestration engine and we'll see that in next slide. So what is container orchestration engine? Container orchestration engine is a tool to automate deploying, scaling, and managing containerized apps at a large scale in a dynamic environment. There are many container orchestration tools out there. Some of the popular well-known are Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, and Apache Mesos. DevOps team uses these tools to control and automate most of the tasks when it comes to managing lifecycle of a container at a large scale 
from its creation to deletion. And we'll discuss more about on these topics in next few slides. So let's go back to the same diagram that we just saw earlier, where we have a bunch of apps and large IT infrastructure on other side. And this time, we also have a container orchestration engine in middle. There are two common primary things that any container orchestration engine performs. They are clustering and scalability. First, let's look at the clustering. The way clustering forms in most of the tools are, we have a master server where the orchestration engine is installed and configured. Then we join the worker nodes together along with the master node, thus form the cluster of nodes. Here, master server acts as a cluster manager which manages the worker nodes inside the cluster. So by performing the clustering, it opens to a lot of opportunities, primarily fault tolerance and scalability. Now we'll discuss about the fault tolerance and scalability in next slide. Next common feature is scheduling. As name indicates, we schedule something here, and that is containerized apps onto these worker nodes. Imagine that you are able to deploy an app, and the requirement here is to deploy apps onto a specific nodes which has SSD drives and for better IO speed. And thanks to container orchestration engine, with the help of that, you can deploy the apps onto the nodes where it has SSD drives. All we have to do here is define the requirement in a config file and submit it to the container orchestration engine. Then it is a responsibility of orchestration engine to find the nodes which matches to the requirement and schedule the containerized app accordingly. That's about the scheduling. At a very high level, clustering and scheduling are two primary features of a container orchestration engine. So what are the other important features of this tool? And we'll see that in next slide. In this slide, we'll see some other important features of container orchestration engine. Before we discuss that, let's get a copy of picture we had in the previous slide. And here it is. We already discussed about the clustering and scheduling. Now let's move on to the next important features of container orchestration engine, which is scalability. And coming to the scalability, in general, the scalability means we are able to increase or decrease application instances or node instances as per the traffic demand. So scalability is a way of increasing the number of application instances when the traffic demand from outside world goes up and down accordingly. The same applies to the size of the cluster, where we can scale up the cluster by adding additional worker nodes and in the same way, we can scale down the cluster by removing the worker nodes from the cluster. So with the help of container orchestration engine, we can scale up and down the application instances and the node instances dynamically as per the traffic demand. And that's about the scalability feature of container orchestration engine tool. And next feature is load balancing. Imagine that you have a multiple instances of your app running on multiple worker nodes. Then container orchestration engine distributes the traffic equally across all application instances accordingly. It makes sure that no one specific worker node gets all the hate at the same time. So that's a responsibility of load balancer. And the next feature is fault tolerance. As we know, our containerized apps runs inside the containers and these containers runs on top of worker nodes. So what if the container goes down or the worker node itself goes down? And this is where the fault tolerance features comes in. Typically, there will be a monitoring process running on the worker node all the time. And this monitors the containers and the worker node health status and submit it to the master node. If the container engine finds out the container is failed or stopped for any unknown reason, then it will recreate the containers on the same healthy node. In case the container orchestration engine finds out the worker node inside the cluster is not responding, then it will reprovision containers from the failed node to a healthy node inside the cluster. So that's about the fault tolerance feature. And the last feature here is deployment. Container orchestration engine offers a different ways to deploy apps. 
imagine that you have a version 1 of application A and this is already deployed and running in production and currently many users are using this application. So now you have to upgrade the version 1 to version 2 of application A. Since application is in already in use, now you need to figure out which type of deployment method you need to use. Some of the scenarios are completely remove the v1 and deploy the v2. So there will be a downtime in between. And this method is called as recreate. In case if you don't want downtime, then you need to choose a different methodology, which can be a rolling update or canary method, where you will be slowly replacing v1 with v2. So with the help of container orchestration engine, you have that flexibility to choose different methods of deployment. And that's about the deployments in short. So these are the some of the important features of container orchestration engine. So far in this video, we discussed about what is container orchestration engine and its important features. And now the question is, what are the container orchestration engines that are currently available? And we'll discuss about that in next video. So before you move on to that, let's review some of the important points that we discussed in the last few minutes. Coming to the summary, First, we discussed about a scenarios where we don't require container orchestration engine in first place. That is where company is very small, running very few apps. But not all companies are small. There are majority of companies are from mid-sized to large-scale enterprises. In that situations, deploying containerized apps is very challenging due to its size and the volume. And we discussed about the clustering and scalability are two major problems if the container orchestration engine is missing. Then we discussed about what is container orchestration engine. And it is a tool to automate deploying, scaling, and managing containerized apps at a large scale in a dynamic environment. There are many container orchestration tools. And some of the popular well-known are Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, and Apache Mesos. Finally, we discussed about the features of container orchestration engine. They are clustering, scalability, scheduling, load balancing, fault tolerance, and deployment. And these are some of the basic features of any container orchestration engine will offer. And coming up next, top three container orchestration engines. In that video, we'll discuss about the what are the top three players in container orchestration engine space. And most of us know Kubernetes is one of them. But what are the other two top container orchestration engines besides Kubernetes? And we'll find that answer in that video. Finally, thank you so much for watching this and I hope to see you in the next video.